by the time we sir. finish introduction uh, students will join sir uh, let sure, us sure. please make uh, it good evening <laughs> yes sir very good evening uh, uh, welcome to today's uh, talent search webinar series program today we have with us dr s ravichandra reddy sir uh, on behalf of kst on behalf of all the teachers and student fraternity i welcome you sir and thank, thank you, you for much. Thank you for accepting our invitation to deliver this session, sir, on panel biodiversity of coastal and marine regions of India. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. And also, I would like to welcome all the students and teacher fraternity who have joined with us in this WebEx platform as well as who is watching this session in the YouTube channel live. Also, I would like to welcome all my colleagues, technical team, non-technical team, who are working behind this. And before starting today's session, I would like to give a brief introduction about Dr. S. Ravichandra Reddy, sir. Sir has finished his BSc and MSc and PhD from Bangalore. And he is a fellow of KSTA. And Professor S. Ravichandra Reddy, sir, finished his PhD degree in the year of 1973, served the Department of Geology, Bangalore University as a lecturer, reader, and professor of fishery. And Dr. Reddy, with a teaching experience of 33 years, has contributed considerably in teaching and research in the field of freshwater biology and fishery. He was a recipient of WHO Fellowship during his PhD tenure, has published more than 99 papers in peer journals, and has 118 abstracts to his credit. He has successfully guided more than 20 PhD and 4 MPhil students in the field of limnology and freshwater fishery. Sir has been the recipient of British Council Young Scientist Fellowship and Royal Society Bursary, which enabled him to work as postdoctoral fellow at Leicester and Liverpool universities, respectively, in the United Kingdom. He was invited as a senior scientist by the Lodge University, Lodge in the Poland, and University of Mississippi, Mississippi Medical Center, Jackson, in the USA. In the year 1986 to 1988, he was also a visiting professor during November 2012 to May 2016 at the Lodz University, Lodz Poland, to deliver lectures to postgraduates of ecology and vertebrate geology department for three weeks. Sir also uh, served as a visiting professor at Karnataka University, Dharwad, Coimbatore University, Shimoga, and Central University, Kasaragod. He has participated in several national and international conferences, seminars, and presented papers. He has also lectured at various universities in India and abroad. Besides his academic achievements, Sir has held several administrative posts in Bangalore University. He served the university with the capacity of Registrar Evaluation, Registrar, Dean, Faculty of Science, Director, Planning, Monitoring, and Evaluation in charge librarian, chairman, department of geology, and member of academic council, senate and syndicate. He served as a member of the sports council of university and was the organizing secretary of international seminar on accreditation in technical e education and 90th Indian Science Congress. After his superannuation in January 2007, he was invited as senior academic consultant by National Assessment and Accreditation Council, which is known as NAC. From February to August 2008, he was acting director of NAC. Thereafter, he served as a consultant in Environment Planning, Monitoring and Research Institute, which is well known as EMPRI, Government of Karnataka, has also served as a member of Karnataka Biodiversity Board. He is the co-author of, co of the book, Namma Parisara, Our Environment in Canada, in the year of 1990, Bangalore University Press, Bangalore uh, is the uh, publisher, and Dynamics of Indian Higher Education, which is JK Publishers, and released in the November 2019, and the book Quality Management Systems in Higher Education, published by NAC in the year of 2021, February. He has been nominated as the Fellow of Karnataka Science and Technology, Karnataka State Science Technology Academy, and currently, he is involved in improving guidance to educational institutes on assessment and accreditation quality issues and MIS. With this brief introduction, I welcome you once again, sir. The floor is yours, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Uh, 
at the outset i express my humble thanks to case karnataka science uh, academy and also the office bearers for giving an opportunity to talk to the young minds who are uh, just uh, trying to listen to my lecture uh, i have selected this topic to enable uh, the diversity of uh, animals both microscopic and macroscopic in the seas of india and some of you may not be involved in the line of uh, biology because uh, you must subject must have been physics chemistry or other science subjects however i personally feel every science subject like physics mathematics chemistry geology geography all these contribute to the welfare of the marine environment irrespective of whether they are located around india or some other country so the most fascinating information which i derive uh, not only personally from various uh, uh, research three aspects have to be met by the animals which live in the sea sir excuse me yes sir ppt change agilla sir adu main illa na change madilla maartta idini kelisthe idini i'm just okay, giving the introduction is it okay please sir please sir uh what i mean to say is it's a large volume of water naturally the animals who live there have to experience the pressure how do they accommodate themselves in the pressure of water that is one the second one is we breathe oxygen from the atmosphere air but oxygen is dissolved in water and these animals have to breathe the oxygen from the dissolved water and uh, number 3 ocean is full of salt 35.5 parts per thousand any ocean for that matter and if the water is getting into the animal it means salt is also getting in and they have to face the problem of uh, uh, loads of salt getting into the body if these animals are successful it is because they are able to overcome all these and able to live happily and diversify themselves in this one now excuse me yeah what is not happening yeah see if you take our country into consideration our country is one of the mega biodiversity biodiversity countries and has a place in the 25 hot spots of the richest and highly endangered eco regions of the world and uh, we are among the one of the earliest asian countries and it perhaps it is the only one that is a long record of inventories of coastal and marine biodiversity dating back to at least two centuries ago that means our forefathers have done extremely difficult task of collecting information about the fauna and flora in the marine habitats of india and today because of their work we have been able to understand what lives in the seas around india that's very important now if you look at the area that is available all around our country in terms of uh, marine region you would realize that uh, the right from upper north region on the western side from gujarat then coming down to indian ocean going up bay of bengal till the bangladesh commences the total mileage that is available in terms of sea water is 7517 km which is equivalent to 4671 miles and um, we have exclusive economic zone also which spreads at about uh, uh, 2 million square kilometers has a self area of 3,72,424 square kilometer and the territorial waters that is our country which can access to the water has about 1,93,834 square kilometer besides all this we also have major island ecosystems andaman and nicobar islands on the eastern side of the country lakshadweep on the western side of the country 
And if you take the coastal population of our country all along the coastal region, you would realize it amounts to 370 plus million people are able to live all along the coastal region. Now, we have been bordered on the western side by Arabian Sea, on the southern side by Indian Ocean, on the eastern side by the Bay of Bengal. Now, if you take all these into consideration, within these threes, we are able to have a wonderful uh, diversity in terms of ecosystems. We have estuaries, we have lagoons, we have mangroves, we have backwaters, salt marshes, rocky coasts, sandy stretches, and coral reefs. Yeah. Now, let me just give you an idea about what are these um, European, I mean, U economic zone EEZ. It is an area of the ocean generally extending to 200 nautical miles, which is amounts to about 230 miles beyond a territorial sea within which a coastal nation has jurisdiction over both living and non-living resources. That's the reason why we, our fishermen are able to fish only up to certain distance. They cannot go beyond. They cannot enter into EEZ zone because it is a protected area. This applies to every country and not just to India. Estuary, when we talk about estuary, it's a very simple definition is river meeting the sea. The place where river meets the sea and merges with it, we normally refer it as estuary because river has a freshwater ecosystem. Sea is a marine ecosystem. Fresh water is merging with the sea and then becoming a sea, a salt water. And uh, we have a good number of estuaries in our country. Lagoons also we have. A lagoon is a shallow body of water protected from a larger body of water. <coughs> which is the larger body? It is the ocean which is able to protect the smaller body. How do these form? These are sand formed by sandbars, barrier islands, or coral reefs. And sometimes lagoons are also called estuaries, but the estuary term is more applicable to river joining the sea. And all along the coastal region in our country, you may come across what are called as mangroves. Mangrove, a tree or a shrub which grows in tidal, chiefly in tropical areas. And uh, if you look at these trees, at the bottom of the tree where roots em uh, emerge, you would realize that these roots are entangled and they appear like a big basket. And uh, all along the coast, we have mangroves. Mangalore is one region where you can cite uh, uh, mangroves within the Karnataka. Then sometime you may also come across a term called backwaters. A backwater is a part of a river in which there is very little current or absolutely no current. It can refer to a branch of a main river which lies alongside it and ultimately this may also join the river again. Uh, and sometimes these regions are backed up by sea so that when there is a high tide, the water gets into these regions and enables them to become salty. And the most, I would say, prominent example of backwater you can see is Kerala. Then you have salt marshes, and these are nothing but coastal wetlands that are flooded and drained by salt water brought in by these tides. Please note, these are all marshy areas, and because the soil is composed of deep mud and peat. Similarly, like salt marshes, we have swamps. Wetland ecosystem is characterized by mineral soils. Sea swamps are also there. Marshes, area of low-lying land, which is flooded with uh, wet in wet season or high tide and typically remains waterlogged. All through the year, this will have water. Now, if you look at these pictures, you would realize lagoon, the formation of a lagoon is very clear. Now, backwater, the formation uh, all along the coastal region and creek, a very narrow inlet of water that generally ends in a marsh, though not always. This is a very creek. <coughs> now, you have a swamp, a marsh and a swamp. Please note, 
A marsh is always having grass all along its marginal regions and the river flows, I mean, the water flows through that. It, now, on the other hand, the swamp is a wetland dominated by huge trees. And uh, they are normally found in the freshwater regions. But sometimes when the seawater enters into the river and then flows in, you may find some of these marshes also. Now, mangroves, I told you, these are available in the uh, coastal region. See the kind of uh, webbing of the roots that are there, and you would be able to use a boat to pass through these. And then backwaters, I told you that it is the uh, seawater entering into the river and then uh, making it to this one, or a river running parallel to that. But sometimes most of these backwaters are salty in nature. <clears throat> now, yeah, coming back to this, you would realize that uh, we have two islands on either side. Andaman and Nicobar Islands on the eastern side, Lakadiv on the western side, that is Arabian Sea. Now, when you take the western side, Arabian Sea, and compare with the eastern side of the Bay of Bengal, there is considerable <coughs> and remarkable dissimilarities. <coughs> you realize that western coast is generally exposed to with heavy surf and rocky shores whereas East Coast is generally shelving with beaches, lagoons, deltas, and marshes. If you drive along the coastal regions of Orissa, you would be able to see a lot of sandy beaches and lagoons all along that. And there is, one, there is a regular phenomenon that takes place in the marine habitat. During monsoon season, there is what is called as an upwelling. And this upwelling is nothing but the water at the great depths will come to the surface. By doing this, it also carries a rich nutrient to the surface. And due to inflow of water, <coughs> the surface water keeps going down to the great depths of the ocean so that all these, during this process, the electronous material that has come along with the water will be getting into the water and then goes to the deep region and gets ready for the next cycle of providing nutritious uh, material to the surface region. And uh, this upwelling phenomena is very intense on the western side and not so intense on the eastern side. And uh, you would realize that uh, the May to September is the southwest monsoon season coming from the western side and October to January is the monsoon season on the eastern side <clears throat> and uh, you would also come across a lot of uh, continental islands on the eastern side. Now coming into Karnataka alone, you would see that the coastal length is around 300 kilometers, continental shelf 27,000 square kilometer, EEZ. It's about 87,000 square kilometer. There are five major harbors, minor harbors all along the coastal region you will see. There are 25 fish landing centers and 217 fishermen villages. And the fish population is exceeding 3 lakhs, uh, more, uh, probably coming close to 4 lakhs now. Active fishermen population is around 86,000. Non-fishing season all along the Bangalore and Karwar coast starts from 10th June, goes up to 15th August. That is the monsoon season in these regions and heavy monsoon and uh, the tides are very high, rough, sea is very rough and therefore these uh, months normally fishing is not carried out. However, fishing continues near to the coast and uh, still fishes are being harvested then. Now, like any other... Uh, <clears throat> habitat, even seas are classified horizontally and vertically. Now, the open sea, we normally refer it as pelagic region. The shore region, we call it as neritic region. When you move away from the shore, you will come into oceanic region. One way, way of identifying oceanic region is when you look around, you would see only water and nothing else. That means you have reached oceanic region. 
And uh, then uh, vertically, you would realize that let us start walking from the shore and keep an oxygen mass and see how long, how deep we can walk into the sea. When you start from the marginal zone where the water is merging with the land, <coughs> that region where the water touches the land up to a depth of four feet or one and a half meters, we normally refer it as littoral zone. And when you start submerging into water, we call it as sublittoral zone. Then when you go down, <coughs> we refer it as bathyl and abyssal is great depths. Hardal, hardal is the region where very difficult to reach. And hadal pelagic, there is still to explore in the hadal pelagic region. Now vertically, if you go down, you have the oceanic region, surface water, then the epipelagic zone to, up to 200 meters. Then from 200 meters to 1,000 meter, it is mesopelagic zone. From 1,000 to 2,000 meter, it is bathypelagic zone. From 2,000 to 3,000, it is abyssopelagic, abyssal pelagic. And from 4,000 to 6,000, it is hadal. Beyond 6,000, it is hadal uh, pelagic. Now, you will be surprised to know that, as I mentioned, pressure impact is so high in the abyssal pelagic region, still you find certain variety of animals, sea animals living there, and they do not come to the epipelagic zone, and they maintain themselves in that region. And uh, here, uh, given on the left side, very clear division of epipelagic, mesopelagic, bathypelagic, abyssopelagic, head, headal pelagic. And uh, intertidal term refers to, if you have seen a sea, you would realize the way there is a saying that time and tide will wait for nobody and it will never wait. It will automatically come, automatically go back. Automatically come, automatically go back. The region where the highest of the high tide touches the land and lowest of the low tide touches the land. That is, lowest of the low tide is the Recipe, receiving of water or reclam re the going water going back that means lot of uh, clear zone is exposed and highest to the high tide means it occupies greater area of land up to uh, every day up to a particular time in the coastal zone and that we call it as the highest to the high tide but sometimes highest to the high tide may increase depending upon the uh, uh, moon as also particular time. And the zone in between the highest of the high tide and the lowest of the low tide, we normally refer it as intertidal zone. And this is the region where you see diversified organisms if you start walking, either during the low tide season, uh, you will be able to realize and uh, identify some of these beautiful animals. Yeah. <clears throat> See, what is happening in our country and in most of the countries is there is lost of, loss of coastal and marine biodiversity components. Over the last few decades, it's a great concern. Why it is happening? Because there is considerable environmental changes, over-exploitation, <coughs> habitat loss, are the, some of the major causes <coughs> that is uh, uh, causing the loss of species. According to certain estimate, it is said that every day we have a loss of one species, marine animal. And uh, what is important is to know what lives there in the sea and what would live in future, that is very important. And uh, this is very true of uh, any regions where there is habitat loss and decline in water quality. Now, when we come to the classification animal, normally we follow the kingdom, the phylum, the class, the order, the family, genus, and species. This is how we go about. And there is also what is called as a subspecies. Not many subspecies have been described in the marine, but there are. And uh, you would see the diversity, all these in large diversified forms you would be able to see in the marine region. 
Now, how do we classify the marine organisms? <laughs> marine organisms are classified based on number one, habitat. Number two, mobility. Now, habitat, I mean, plankton, if you take, these are the free floating micro or macroscopic organisms which depend on wave action for their transport from place to place. You have both phytoplankton and zooplankton, and you also have what is called as a bacterial plankton or gaia. Then you have nekton. These are capable of swimming. And you have benthos. Basically, these are animals or organisms which attach, which require a substrate to live and they basically live at the bottom. And that is how the classification. Now, if you look at this, I'm just giving a pictorial uh, way of uh, depicting the uh, classification. Now you have the pelagic zone, intertidal zone is very clearly marked here. This is the highest of the high tide and uh, lowest of the low tide. Between these two, you have the uh, intertidal zone and continental shelf. You may wonder what is continental shelf? Now you start walking all along the from the shore to the into the sea. Suddenly you will see a great fall into the water, and that goes up to certain. Then it becomes normal, and that area we normally call it as the continental shelf. Continental shelf is very important because the diversity of fish fauna is high in the continental zone, and that is where all the fishing is carried out in uh, our country. <clears throat> Then you see this uh, benthic sea open, all these, we'll come to it when we start looking at each one of these groups. And this is a, just an eye view of the classification of marine organisms. Only one group under vertebrata is not available, that is amphibians. So amphibians have not been able to conquer the salt water. All other organisms, right from protozoa to mammals, they have been able to capture. And uh, this is a uh, diagrammatic representation of the classification. You have the phylum, the class, examples of these one. Then you go to family, you go to genus, you go to species, etc., etc. Now, let me just try to give you an overview of the organism following this class. Please note, I'm going to follow this. I'm not going to mention the uh, classification of each of the organism, but I'll be mentioning the name of the family and the group, and then I'll let you know with photographic evidences, what animals are there. Now, diatoms, these are very common, both in freshwater and marine. And uh, in all Indian coastal and estuary water, diatoms form the do prominent, dominant component of phytoplankton. Sometimes diatoms are also include in the zooplankton. Please note the volume of work carried out by taxonomists and surveyors, those who carry, uh, the, uh, carry out the survey of the oceanic organism. All along the East Coast, 102 species belonging to 17 families have been identified till date. The largest diversity pertains to Naviculacea. There is a plankton, this is Navicula, and uh, these are all the planktonic forms. Navicula is the boat-shaped organism, microscopic organism, and uh, 24 species have been described on the Eastern coast. And on the Western coast, Diversity is still higher. 148 species belonging to 22 families and 22 species in Naviculaceae have been described. Some of the species may overlap on either side. Some are very specific to the eastern coast, while others are very specific to western coast. So this is how the classification is done. This is just a diamond, I mean, uh, uh, photo of uh, various uh, uh, micro photographs of diatom various diatoms that are available in the coastal regions of our country and uh, the dinoflagellates. This is a very interesting group and uh, you see the how these uh, uh, three uh, thing, uh, projecting and uh, these are basically microscopic but sometimes when they attain a good size you would be able to see them without a microscope also but very rare. <clears throat> in the world there have been 4,000 species of dinoflagellates. And out of these 4,000, 50% of them are photosynthetic and many capable of bioluminescence. 
there is one genus called goniolux and uh, these are capable of exhibiting light at times of danger or at times of feeding and uh, this is very common phenomena and there are other types another group of uh, diatoms which are responsible to provide a red color to the water and normally such a phenomenon when it water becomes red we call it as red tide in the coastal zone and uh, there is a particular that dinoflagellate called gymnodynium ketonatum and pyrodynium brahmas these are able to secrete what is called as saxi toxin and this is a toxin which is detrimental to fish so the the whole area becomes red in color the reason being <clears throat> they multiply in such large quantities the whole wa surface water of the ocean i'm not talking about the entire ocean where they are available that becomes red in color and it's uh, uh, one may see that uh, the fishes have died and the blood is floating on the water no if you just take one drop and examine it under the microscope you see hundreds of uh, these uh, gymnodynium uh, ketonatum under the microscope in one drop of uh, the water then dinoflagellate uh, these are considerably i mean i would say on the eastern and western side it's not as much diversified as the previous forms but uh, you would be able to still find about 15 species coming under seven families under the eastern coast while 76 species under 10 families are available on the western coast among the most prominent one is the dinophyce is a dominant with 18 species this is followed by peridineac and ceratiac with 13 and 10 species each now among the protozoans the first group number of protozoans from the indian seas range i mean come to 2577 which is equivalent to 8% of the total world protozoan fauna the indian protozoan also contributes to the world protozoan fauna and there are some of the protozoans are unique unique to this uh, uh, region itself then foraminifera is another group which is very commonly seen Please note, 40,000 species of foraminifers have been described in the world. And we have three types of foraminifers. One is organic. The second one is agglutinated. The third one is calcareous. All these are found. And you would see that uh, the major part of the was along the Puri beach, that is Puri and Jagannath, on the eastern side, continental Vishakapatanam, 32 species, and Krushadi Islands, Gulf of Mannar, 47 species. Arabian Sea, 164 species have been described from Kerala coast. 12 species have been described in the Zoo Beach and Mumbai. 16 to 20 species have been described from Mangalore. And finally, 84 species from shallow waters of Gulf of Cambay on the east, western side. So this is the description of the diversity of uh, foraminifers that are available on the, in the seas of our country. Now, ciliates those which have been able to in the world there are 12000 described species of ciliate and uh, these are also planktonic some of them are planktonic in our country 32 species belonging to 12 genera are known and uh, please note the abundance of ciliates coincides with the abundance of diatoms and dinoflagellates if there is a bloom of diatoms and dinoflagellate you can easily expect a good growth of uh, the <clears throat> ciliates and your catch will have a good composition of ciliates based on the diatom and dinoflagellate uh, bloom. Now, porifera. Porifera, the best common name is sponges. I mean, I'm sure that you would have seen a sponge, may not be in a living condition, but these are very common both in freshwater and marine. <clears throat> and uh, please note, there are about 5,500 species of uh, sponges today living sponges today and uh, <clears throat> please note majority of them are benthic marine environment that means they go to the bottom they don't live in the marginal areas and this is just a description of the <clears throat> sponges and hard corals all along the 
western and the eastern coast. Please note, <clears throat> Gulf of Kutch, this is uh, sponges, this is an uh, egg, and yeah, another group like this. So you would be able to see <clears throat> on the western side, on the eastern side, Andaman and Nicobar Islands and Lakshadweep Island. These are very common. Now, sponges have beautiful colors, I must admit. The reason is I'm a scuba diver. And uh, whenever I do scuba diving, I look at these uh, uh, animals and they have brilliant colors. You'll be able to see them only when you dive and go to the areas where these are available. Sponges are also visible when you do this uh, snorkeling. But these are deep water sponges and their colors is so fascinating. And the surfaces are so inquisitive in the form of what are these and how do they form and all that. You know, <clears throat> in India, so far, 486 uh, sponges, uh, species of uh, sponges have been described. Uh, <clears throat> the most dominant species is Desmospongia, followed by Hydrospongia and Calisiospongia. Gulf of Manar and Park Bay has the highest diversity, 319 species. Andaman and Nicobar Islands, 95 species. Lakshadweep, 82 species. And Gulf of Kutch, 25 species of uh, sponges have been described. Please note there are also sponges in the fresh water. I'll not deal with it here. Now see the beautiful colors that you are able to see and the diversified uh, structure, external structure. This is a Clathrina mima, five sponge, Monocora arbuscula, red encrusting sponge, and uh, Acanthella clythra. This is orange ball sponge, and uh, oral encrusted sponge. Then Haliclona fazigra, fazigera, and there's a blue, blue sponge, and then Stylisa massa, mango sponge. This is the inside of a mango, looks like beautiful color. And uh, now coming to Cilantrata, uh, Phylum Nideria is highly diverse. You must have heard about jellyfish, sea anemones, and corals. And uh, common laboratory hydra also comes under Cilantrata. <clears throat> uh, see, if you take the number of extant, that means those who have totally disappeared species, they amount to about 11,000. That means we have lost a very good, uh, rich resource of uh, nidarians from this world. And many species exhibit dimorphic life cycle that includes two entirely different adult morph morphologies, polypoid and medisoid form. Now, global diversity, 9,000 to 12,000. In Indian seas, see, nidaria has three classes, hydrozoa, scyphozoa, anthozoa. And uh, under hydrozoa, 212 species have been described. While the number goes down considerably under Skyphozoa and increases significantly under Anthozoa, 600 species have been described. Now, these are some of the Skyphozoans and uh, or this one. So, you would be able to see some of the pictures, some of the Nidarians. We normally refer this as sea fan and Hydrozoa. First description Hydrozoa is meant by Anandale in the Chilka Lake. Chilka Lagoon, we also call it. And this is, please note, this is in Orissa. Subsequently, Menon reported 35 species under 20 genera. Mammon described 116 species belonging to 13 families. Milliporina, Stylasternia, Trachylina, orders have received little attention. Bougainvillea, Calicopsis, Hydra, Hydrocornea, Penaria, Sarsia, these are the popular forms which have been described under hydrozoa. <clears throat> Hydroids are mostly benthic. See, these are some of the hydrozoans which have been described. See this beautiful creature, uh, this one. And uh, you have uh, such a fantastic fan-like structures, uh, polyps and uh, this one, funnel-like hydroid. And then siphonophora, polymorphic swimming floating colonies, physalia. See, the common name for physalia is Portuguese man of war. And uh, Rhizophysa, Agalma, these are some of the most common forms which are present both on the eastern side and on the western side. Uh, Indian siphonophora are very abundant and constitute an important part of marine 
and uh, we have 116 valid one variety and three doubtful species have been described 89 occur in the indian size now nidaria total there are 842 plus plus refers to it is being added on hydrozoa 212 skyphozoa 34 anthozoa 227 tenophora 12 now please note this is uh, jellyfish and uh, they'll be beautiful to look at when they start swimming and upside down jellyfish Cassiopeia andromeda Nidaria. this uh, jellyfish are found every ocean from the surface to deep sea uh, <clears throat> so large often colorful jellyfish are common in coastal zones worldwide now these are please note this is sea anemone uh, this was shot in Karwar rocky shore and uh, Hetractis magnifera magnificent sea anemone See, the advantage of sea anemone is that these are some of the marine equi, I mean, I would say colorful fisher, they take shelter and they also exhibit what is called as a uh, mutualism. That is, this is able to feed on some of the uh, host uh, parasites while the fish gets uh, rubbed by these uh, polyps uh, tentacles and that is the advantage of this. Please note, this is a, actually... Uh, this is jellyfish, looks like a starfish. Now, anthozo, coral reefs. See, we have corals. Some of you might have kept it at home also. Uh, any variety of um, marine anthozoa are normally referred as corals. <clears throat> and the corals, unlike other marine organisms, they have what is called as a skeleton, external skeleton internal skeleton it could be external or it could be internal and basically they are stony or leathery consistency and sometimes the coral term is also applied to the skeleton rather than the animal itself stony corals madriporaria <clears throat> sileractina 1000 species have been described black corals thorny coral antipatheria and horny corals gorgonesia this is 1,200 species. Blue coral, Cenoticalia, one living species have been identified. Now, this gives you an idea about which are the regions where corals are available. Now, you have Lakshadweep Islands, you have Park Bay, Gulf of Manar, and Sri Lanka. Then uh, you have Andaman and Nicobar Islands. In India, we get three types of corals. One is atoll, the second one is fringing, and the third one is barrier reef. And... Uh, <clears throat> Fringing reefs are found in Gulf of Manar, uh, this is the region. Then, uh, yeah, and Park Bay. Uh, platform reefs are seen along the Gulf of Kutch. Pachai reefs are present near Ratnagiri, that the Maharashtra and Malvan coast. Fringing and barrier reefs are found in Andamans and Nicobar Islands. Atoll reefs are found in Lakshadweep. This is the description. There. Now, what do you mean by fringing reef? Basically, fringing reefs are shore region, develop near the shore and extend on out into the sea. They start from the shore, then go into the sea. This is just an external description of the coral. And uh, <clears throat> see, they need an F, hard structure to establish. The polyps require a hard structure to first make an anchoring. Then they start growing. And deposition of calcium continues to take place year after year. And one find that the whole area would have become a um, reef. And this is how it generates. Sorry. Yeah. Now. Yeah. Sorry, there's uh, just a wait. Yeah, yeah correct. Okay, I'm sorry about this. Just hide. Um, good. Yeah, fine. Um, barrier reefs lie farther from the shore. They are away from the shore. 
and contain a literally deep lagoon. This is what you mean by deep, I mean depression, you call it as that. And uh, you have this. Yes. So normally these are available only after 100 kilometers from the shore. And sometimes the length of these coral reefs may range up to 2000 kilometers in length. So it depends on how this one. Now, atolls. So please note, it is something like a, a what can I say? Um, a depression and um, or a reef with steep outer slopes. These are the steep outer slopes that surround a central lagoon. They are found far from land and mainly in the Indian and South Pacific oceans. So now corals <clears throat> was study on corals was initiated in our country in the year 1847 and later it was continued in 1988 and elaboration of this study also took place in 1988. Andaman and Nicobar Islands are the richest coral species uh, diversity as compared to those of Gulf of uh, Kutch in uh, comparatively poorer. Uh, on the other hand, Lakshadweep have more number of species than the Gulf of Mannar. And from the Indian Ocean, 227 species belonging to 71 genera and 12 families have been reported. Only 44 species have been described among the deep sea corals. Now, let me know. Yeah. Please note, the corals have a very rich commercial importance. And they provide a lot of resources which are commercial, which have a commercial value. As a result, people have been exploiting corals. Corals, sands, coral debris is widespread. Exploitation is taking place in some of the places like Gulf of Mannar and Gulf of Kutch. Now, these are some of the photographs of corals, which also provide beautiful colors. This is called spinal cup coral, pectinia pectiniata, bird's nest coral, seriatopora histix. This is ruffled coral, please note, Mer merulina amphiliata, mushroom color, very clear description of mushroom, fungia scutaria. Now, these are some of the corals. I am not go spending more, too much time. And we come to the next group, Annelida. And uh, most uh, Annelida, the best example I can suggest among the land is the earthworm comes under Annelida. And Annelida has diversified forms. And these are the marine annelids that have been described. So <clears throat> please note, Archai Annelida, we have 20. <clears throat> Polychaetes, 200 species, 800 species, 30, 83 species have been described. Central Marine Fisheries Research Institute has listed 200 species of maritime marine polychaetes. Oligota, uh, Oligokita are poorly known. Saipancula is a very common one. They are available in Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Gulf of Mannar and Gulf of Kutch, Ekiura, and uh, 33. Ketognatha. These are normally referred as arrow worms. Very nice to look at because the shape of the organism is in the shape of an arrow. Hence, it is called arrow worm. And uh, so, rank second after this one. Tardigrada, there are about uh, 10 species. Occur is Neofauna. Where is this one? Please note, these are some of the forms which have been described. And uh, this is fan worm. Sevela strata, indica, then sandworm, nariz, and you have the social feather duster, Vespera brunate, and then sipunculus. This is also very common. Now, these are some of the other forms of uh, analytes that have been described in the seas of India, and are not being able. Yeah, now come to the next group, crustaceans. See, in the marine habitat, Crustaceans are one of the most popular invertebrate groups that are available. There are about 67,000 described living species of crustaceans in the world. <clears throat> it's interesting to note 
<laughs> the smallest crustacean is 100 micrometer in length. Please note, it is not even meter, it is micrometer. The largest is the Japanese spider crab with a leg span of four meters. Four meter is not an ordinary, uh, this one. The biomass of one species of Antarctic krill, Euphausia superba, has been estimated at 500 million tons at any given time. See, we established uh, a station in Antarctica to claim that we also have a claim in the portion of the Antarctica. And our sound scientists have been working on Euphausia superba <laughs> because it is predicted <coughs> that in the near future, if Antarctica superba will replace the protein requirement of human beings. So that is the level at which uh, it's being uh, looked at. <clears throat> now, distribution of crustaceans, you will read 69 species have been described in the Gulf of Kutch, 45 species in uh, Lakshadweep, 380 species in Park Bay, 853 species in the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. And you have the list here. And uh, these are some of the species under global diversity of crustacean species. <clears throat> now you would see in India, Malacostracan 75, Cumacea 30, Tanidacea 1, Isopoda 33, Amphipoda 139, Fosiaceae 23, Stomatopoda 121. Now, yeah, a total of 144 species, 75 genera and 19 families of barnacles. Barnacle is another very important uh, <clears throat> crustacean that has been indicated. And you see, these are some of the barnacles which have been growing in the coastal zone. And um, you see, all this is equipped with the barnacle. This is the, see, Gujarat 17 species, Maharashtra 18 species, Goa 5 species, like that. We'll come to Karnataka. We'll, no, all this is... See, there is what is called as marine falling organisms. What do you mean by marine falling organisms? You would realize that um, <clears throat> these require a substrate for attachment. The whole life cycle is spent as an attached form and not a free swimming form. So what happens is one of the best surface for attachment is the wood of the ship or the plates of the ship, which is submerged underwater. Larvae of these barnacles get attached, then start growing. Now, once they start growing, in not in one or two numbers, hundreds of them, thousands of them, the disadvantage is that the ship is not able to sail faster because it has to take the impact of these barnacles. <laughs> now, in America, people have worked extensively and they have been able to develop anti-fouling agents. Some of these are listed under fouling organisms. And Americans have identified, even Japanese for that matter, have identified anti-fouling agents. What they normally do is when they build a ship or a boat, they paint with these anti-fouling agents. And as a result of that, no barnacle is able to attach themselves and the cruising speed of the boat will continues to remain the same and it will not go down. So that's the advantage of uh, this one. So these are some of the barnacle distribution in our country. Pelagic goose barnacle, acaron barnacle, balana species. And these are some of the barnacle. They are sessile. Please note, as I mentioned, barnacles are sessile and suspension feeders. Uh, <clears throat> Now, decapod crustaceans, we have commercial shrimps and prawns have been recorded in India. 55 species, Brachurans 70, 705, Anamora 10, 162, Molluska 3370, Bryozoan species occur in 200. Now, these are some of the crustaceans which are very commonly seen in the coastal region. And uh, the crabs and beautiful uh, coloration is also there. And um, you know, these are some of this one, very common. 
and you will see some of the beautiful uh, banded coral cleaner shrimp. It is a shrimp basically, it normally found in the coral region. It is able to use the food attached to the coral or clean that and sexy sea anemone shrimp and you have anemone shrimp, very climinous, brevis carpathis. Now hinge back on rhino, consanitis, urbanarensis. See the structure. It's very difficult to identify where the head is, where the like. This is the crab, ghost crab, and a beautiful colored uh, red spotted crab, stone crab, and a fiddler crab, fiddler crab. Use yucca tetra gonon. And these are some of this one. Now coming to the next group, mollusca, were first studied in the beginning of 20th century. Please note, till the century century, no study was made on the molluscan fauna of our country. From in the 20th century itself, they have been able to identify 5,070 species of mollusca and 3,370 are from marine habitats. It means this is both marine freshwater and land and 3,370 are from marine habitats. Richest biodiversity of mollusca is found in Andamar and Nicomal Island and 1,000 species. On the other hand, Gulf of Mannar, we have 428. Lakshadweep, we have 424 species. Now, this is just a description of which, which and where they are available. Now, it gives you a very beautiful picture of the diversity of uh, mollusca, crusty, I mean, uh, the star, echinoderms, and the fishes. Now, exploitation of mollusks. Please note, in our country, considerable exploitation is taking, is being carried out with regard to mollusks. The reason is, they not only provide food, but also provide other valuable products. <clears throat> Eight species have been exploited, two species have been exploited, 17 species. You must have heard about uh, peril oyster. <clears throat> there is a uh, growth of peril, uh, freshwater mussel and similarly clams, peril oysters, giant clams, window pane oysters, other gastropods, cephalopods. So now please note this is just a bird's view of the various uh, uh, mollusks that are uh, available in the seas of India and uh, please, this is a mitilus edit is very common just visit the rocky shore in Kar Karwar you would be able to see this very easily mitilus edilis now <clears throat> this is the one no? see the other day somebody had put uh, in the uh, whatsapp first time you are able to see the large uh, shell that is the something like a they use it for um, blowing the uh, this one. And uh, actually, I just observed, enlarged that it is not a living uh, shell. See, let me tell you, when the shell, when the animal in the shell dies, the shell remains like that. It becomes an empty space inside. So the hermit crabs, they lay eggs there. And uh, when they lay eggs or these young ones, they go and occupy this one continue to grow there. As a result, when they reach a particular size, they are unable to come out. So they use their uh, legs to move. And when they move, the shell also is carried from place to place. Somebody had put that the shell is moving. No, it is not the shell. It is the hermit crab, which is uh, walking on the uh, sand and you are able to see the shell going along with it. I am talking about this uh, Conch cell or something other they call it. So this is the one I am referring to. Chiton. This is our, yeah. Now, Peril Nautilus. Please note, this is called Dentalium Hexagonum. We normally refer this as a elephant tusk. It resembles the tusk of an elephant. Hence, it is called elephant tusk. Lynx cowrie and then tiger cowrie, all this. Now, coming to Echinoderms. Crinoidea 95, Osteroidea 180, Ophiroidea 150, Echoidea 150, Holothuroidea 160, Andaman and Nicobar. There are 257 species of Echinoderms have been identified. Lakshadweep 77 species, Gulf of Manar 112 species. And uh, all Orotherians are now included in the Schedule 1 of the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972 of our country. So you cannot easily touch them. And uh, see, sometimes I must tell you, uh, Many people smuggle the shells 
and sometimes uh, <clears throat> the corals also. And uh, there is a security in uh, Bangalore. And when they seize this from the person who has brought them to sell in the market, uh, they normally refer it to me and I identify and tell them whether they come under the schedule or you can. And uh, the other day they sent me a photograph of a shark. And uh, is it uh, permitted to capture or this one? The sharks are now you protected animals. You cannot capture them. So I had to inform them. Some of the corals also are one. So these are some of the echinoderms which you can see. And beautiful uh, pictures. See, this is a sea lily, starfish again in Karwar. See the nature of uh, starfishes that are available. And some of these. Hmm? This is the uh, holothuria. It's a sea cucumber. And if you try to hold that, it ejects a fluid which is irritant to the uh, fingers. And one has to be careful. And this is the bur bur burrowing sea urchin. These are, if you penetrate, if these penetrate into your fingers, I don't call it poisonous, but that will be burning for some time to come. Now, cardata refers to, there's a carda dorsalis vertebral column. Hemi cardata refers to, there is no vertebral column. Hemi, partial vertebral column. Entropneusta, pterobranchia, placostoviridia. Now, Tychodora, balanoglossus, glandiceps from Gulf of Manar, Gulf of Kutch, Andaman Island, Lakshadweep, Maldives, etc. Tamil Nadu coast up to Cape Comorans, sacoglossus has been recorded from the high saline marshy areas of central bands in West Bengal. Now, protocardate, cephalocardata, urocardata, acidacea, sea squids, thaliacea, salves, and larvacea, planktonic forms. Now, coming to the fishes, there is about 28,000 species of fishes in this world, in the marine habitat, please note. In our country, the first man to describe Sir Francis Day 1,418 species. Sir Francis Day has written Taxonomy of Fishes of India. It's a, there is a book. Normally it is being used because he has given photographs of the fish, the morphological characters and identifying characters of the species. Please note, he is not a zoologist, he is a fishery biologist. He is a geologist who spent his life in identifying the fishes of this country. Talwar described 2,546 species of fish. Please note, 57% of marine fish genera are common to the Indian Ocean, Atlantic and Mediterranean. What do we mean by this? 57% of the marine fish of our country are also found in uh, Atlantic Sea and Mediterranean Ocean. So today we have... Indian Ocean, 1,367 species have been re recorded. Lakshadweep Islands have a total of 603 species. Andaman and Nicobar Island, 1,000 species. Gulf of Manar has 538 species. The exact number of species associated with coral reefs in India is still to be found. Because coral reefs, you get large number of uh, diversified forms, beautiful colored fishes. They are small in size as compared to marketable size. And uh, it is, there is a scope to look at this and identify how many species are there. Now, according to our uh, Wildlife Act, which are the species which have been included under uh, threatened species? Scoliodon, Carcaria species, the other day, which was sent to me was a Carcaria species, Chylocilium, Race Desiatis, Aetobatus, Skates, Rhinchobatus, and Rhinobatus. Now, this is the most common fish, marine fish, which is available, Indian mackerel. It is called Rastrigil kanagurta. <clears throat> and uh, this is the oil fish, Indian oil, sardine oil. And Clupia longiceps, intense along the west, high concentration of omega-3 fatty acids is available. Now, this is called ribbon fishes. And uh, you, if you are, visit Karwar, please visit the uh, Kali River uh, estuary you would see people hanging these fishes vertically down along bamboo po poles. They tie a thread between two poles and hang these fishes so that they dry them. And the dried fish are sold in the market. This is a ribbon for Trichurus cephala, Leptocuranthus. Now, yeah, see this 
baskets of ribbon fishes are being brought to the show. Now, these are some of the ornament, I won't call it ornamental, very in I mean, uh, diversified species of fish. Now, see this fish and see this, see this and this. This I was able to collect in Murudeshwar and uh, in the seashore. And this is nothing but a. Uh, see what happens, you know, it has all these scales of the fish have been modified into spines. And it will, these are the eyes. <coughs> now, when during non-aggressive time that means when there is no threat this will be normal the spines will be flat it looks like a scale but supposing there is an invader including human being it engulfs water and sand into the mouth and then takes it inside and all these spines become erect and it's not easy to capture or hold on to that and uh, so this is the beauty of this fish and uh, yeah now, coming to reptiles, this is from India, please note. Polaris platyrus linear, Karwa region was shot. And uh, leatherbacks, I mean, you have 26 species of uh, snakes belonging to the family Hydrophidae. See, there are five species of uh, turtles and uh, seven species of tools are reported in the world, of which five of them have been recorded in and around India. Only seven are there in the world, of which five are recorded in our country. The leatherback sea turtle... Democylis foriatsia is a rare species. Now, this is Polaris platonus. Now, this is the other genus Laticauda, Indian sea snake. See, when the nets are cast, sometimes when they bring it to the shore, you would see some of these snakes which are being caught in the fish nets and then brought to the shore. They will be still alive. Normally, the fishermen just leave it back to the sea. Uh, this is the one. Now, this is the olive ridley turtle, which is very famous in our country. And uh, now, this is the nesting sites of the olive ridley turtle and uh, a typical aribeda. The place where they nest in aggregation, please note all this uh, come from the sea and are nested. This region, this process is called Neri aribeda, A R R I B A D A, aribeda, Lepidosilus olivacea. <coughs> Now see this, these are the young ones after hatching from the eggs, they move away. Even today, during the nesting season, the coastal region is protected, particularly in Orissa, because they do this. And I believe in Karo near Mangalore also, they have started some, this one, and nowadays they are trying to protect them. So now coming, let's coming to the last group, marine mammals belonging to three orders, Cetacea, Carnivora, and Sirenia. Only 40 out of 120 are reported in our country. 25 species of marine mammals belonging to Cetacea and Sirenia are reported from Indian seas. Majority are oceanic. Oceanic means far away from this marginal or coastal region. Government of India has so far listed three species of Cetaceans and dugong, sea cow, in Schedule 1 of the Wildlife Act. They are protected animals. You cannot kill them, neither can you capture them. 40 species of cetacean have been reported from Indian Ocean, among which 25 species are represented in India. 20, one is endangered, four are vulnerable, 20 are insufficiently known. Dugong is considered as vulnerable. Indian Wildlife Act 19 has listed only three species of cetaceans, Irrawaddy dolphin, Ganges River dolphin, and sperm whale, and the dugong in Schedule 1. Now, please note, this is the sea cow, dugong, this is the hunchback dolphin. This is Bellinoptera musculus indica. That is the Indian blue whale and uh, bottlenose dolphin. These are very common in our waters. Now, let me go back. This is about the diversity of fauna in the seas of India. Uh, you young minds, I must tell you that uh, how the marine habitat is protected and who are all in charge of that. Government of India at the top, you have Ministry of Agriculture and Forestry. Under this, you have Indian Council of Agriculture Research. There is a section called Fisheries. One deals with freshwater, the other one deals with marine. Now, there is also what is called as the Coastal Science and Technology Cell, Oceanic Science and Technology Cell. 
under Department of Ocean Development, DOD, you have Ocean Engineering and Robotics, Marine Placer Deposits, Marine Geology and Geophysics, Marine Coastal Ecology, Marine Biology, Coastal Marine Culture Systems, Marine Microbiology, Marine Bentas. Please note, these are the discipline various universities have been offering and doing a lot of research in this. And we also have in the National Institute of Oceanography at uh, Goa, a center for expedition to Antarctica. And uh, if you are interested, you apply. And if you are selected, you will be taken to Antarctica and made to do some research. That's the advantage. And uh, it's really worth it. I still know that one of my colleagues from uh, uh, University of Goa, he participated in Antarctica and was there for uh, four months in Antarctica. Please note the conditions are different than what you imagine in a place like Bangalore. And uh, these, see, they are, why I'm mentioning this is these are the areas where one can put their future plan. You can do a lot of things here. And that is what I mean. Institutions under Government of India, Marine Fisheries Sector, Center for Cellular and Molecular Biology, CCMB at Hyderabad, National Institute of Oceanography, NIO, Goa, Central Marine Fisheries Research Institute, CMFRI. This is in uh, Cochin. And Zoological Survey of India, that's located in uh, Bengal, that is uh, Calcutta. <clears throat> Now, this is some of the university which deal exclusively with fish and other related uh, fields. Cochin University of Science and Technology, they offer a course, degree course. Fisheries College, Mangalore, they also offer a MFSC, Master of Fishery Science, Bachelor of Fishery Science. An MSc course in Marine Biology is offered, which is now under uh, Dharwar, Karnataka University, Dharwar. Goa University also offers a Fisheries course, Center for Advanced Study in Marine Biology, Anamala University, Fisheries College, Tamil Nadu Agriculture University, and uh, Andhra University. There is one more in Tuti Karan on fisheries. So they also offer both undergraduate and postgraduate courses in fisheries, particularly. And um, I would say, and uh, not that time, not a information technology person. But you must explore and uh, then uh, you'd be working with nature. That's the advantage. When you work with a computer day and night, you can also work with nature, get more involved in natural habitat and the surrounding fauna and flora. That's beautiful. This is about uh, what I wanted to say. Yeah, I wanted to show you a phenomenon which I observed in Maldives. I was walking along the shore with my friend. I could see these small cells displaying bioluminescence all along. And uh, one could see, but I could not identify. The local people mentioned some name in their own language, which I could not understand. But this is a phenomenon, I believe. Sometimes the whole uh, coastal zone, I mean marginal zone, will be with lights like this. And this is just a scuba diving which I was doing in uh, Maldives. And please note, these are the corals which um, I'm interested. But I, due to lack of time, I'm not been a, I'm unable to show you some of the beautiful uh, colored fishes in the coral region. Thank you very much. And if you have any questions, please ask. Keep your mind open instead of just jumping directly into information technology. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much for a very insightful and informative talk on marine resources. In fact, uh, many of the things that I had learned some 30 years ago was like a recap, sir. Thank you very much. Yeah. Are there any questions? I'll be happy to answer them or provide some information. Ah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. So the voice is little low. I don't know the reason. My voice, sir? Yeah, now, now it is better, sir. Oh, okay. 
Sir, I am very thankful to you for a very insightful and informative talk. Very resources. Sure, students would have got a lot of take home message. Some of them may be interested to pursue their career in marine science. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Some of you have doubts in the Vidya Tigolo, Sir Ravana Kelbozo, Marine Fisheries, Marine Resource Service, Sir Ravana Agada, Anubova, Matu Panditia, Ide. Another doubt is there, Canada look here, Bodo, Umesh or Matadi Kelong is there on the unmute Martha Kelbo, in the chat box and another question is there. Request if any questions uh, you would like to ask, uh, please raise your virtual hand. I will unmute. You can ask directly to the sir. Otherwise, mention in the chat box. So far, there are no questions, sir. Who can wind up? If there are any questions, we will get. Yeah. I mean, if since you have my email, they can take yes, my sir. email and uh, write to me. I'll try to yes, guide them. Yes, sir. Sir, thank, you, sir. Yeah. thank you, sir. For your thank time you. and uh, very informative talk, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. I am really appreciate uh, uh, for giving me an opportunity to interact with the students. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir.